in January last year that I made a video about understanding your photography. And in that episode, I discussed the third pivotal moment in my own work when I captured an image called Guardians of the Forest, which was in May 2016 in Snowdonia. It's an image which was a turning point, not just because of its success, but because it gave me the confidence in my work which had been lacking. With confidence can sometimes come motivation, and so the morning after I returned from Snowdonia, I revisited this local woodland with this added mental boost. I recall it was a very damp, calm and foggy morning, and this woodland was absolutely brimming with atmosphere. It's a place that I'd found about three months previous. It's not very big, but I was keen to explore a little bit further. And I remember just crouching under these low hanging pine branches and it just revealed this footpath almost like this forgotten footpath that wasn't being used anymore and I found myself in this very dark and dense plantation but there was this, uh, this very small opening just over to the left and these mossy twisted oak branches caught my eye I was like wow that that looks like something that needs to be investigated so I started to kind of weave my way through these very uniform and uh, linear pine trees and then got closer to this pine tree, uh, this oak tree, and it just revealed itself. And it was, I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Just this opening in the canopy and this incredible soft light just funneling down and hitting these mossy branches. And I knew straight away that I'd found something really quite special. You know, quite sad in that you've got this oak tree that's been choked of life, but visually, aesthetically, graphically, it was very striking. And the way in which I approached it just appeared to be the best angle to, to capture it. So I immediately set, started to set up the tripod, but felt nervous. There was, it was very eerie, um, very, very creepy. And I'm used to walking around in foggy woodlands, but this place, it really freaked me out. But I was desperate to take a picture. And Meg, who's normally very active, running around everywhere, enjoying herself, she sat next to me completely motionless and just stared into the deep dark woodland behind me, which made me even more nervous. I just kept looking over my shoulder. And I said to Meg, I said, you know, if you're going to stare into the woodland, at least stare in the same direction I'm looking. But yeah, I was, I was really quite, quite nervous, but you know, incredibly excited to be photographing this tree. But the thing that struck me as well was the branches around me were absolutely sodden. And every now and then a drop of water would just fall off a branch and hit the back of my neck and it just sent this chill down my spine which just added to the the atmosphere and the the feeling and the experience and it was absolutely silent as well the only thing that you could hear was every now and then was a flap of wings through the through the treetops it was very kind of sleepy hollow just uh yeah yeah very creepy so i made an image i came out of that dark area back into the more open and brighter woodland but it just kept drawing me back even though it made me nervous it just kept drawing me back um, so i went back and i tried again tried some different different angles but yeah absolutely fabulous discovery so i went home and that evening i uploaded the images into into Lightroom and I started editing you know the room was quite dimly lit and I like to put a bit of music on in the background sometimes when I'm editing and I'm quite fond of film scores you know music by Hans Zimmer etc and I was listening to a soundtrack from Interstellar a fantastic film and this piece of music that I was playing while I was in this kind of crucial moment of editing I had to do very little editing because the scene itself, you know, it just, it, it, you know, it was what it was. It, you know, it was just fabulous light and this beautiful, natural, dark vignette. Um, but this piece of music, it just fitted the image absolutely perfectly. It was slow, it was moody, it was spooky. And every now and then there's just this high pitched piano key. And it just reminded me of those drops of water hitting my, the back of my neck. And I thought, wow, this, this music is absolutely perfect just fitting for this image so I had a look to see what the music was called and the title of the piece was called Afraid of Time and that's what I ended up titling the image was Afraid of Time it's always kind of sounded a little bit pretentious but that's where the the title came from but it was apt in so many other ways it wasn't just about the music when I read the title I thought well you know it, it struck a chord with me personally because at that moment in time I was still 
struggling, trying to come to terms with how my life had changed quite dramatically, the chronic pain that I was dealing with. And time was an issue. It was always like, when am I going to get back, back out on the bike? When am I going to feel better? When is this pain going to stop? How much time is this going to take? That was something that was always on my mind. And in time, certainly something that I've been more conscious of um, in the subsequent years as well when photographing woodland, because you come into these places and it gives a sense of time just standing still. Even though you get that feeling when you're here, you can come a week later, a month later, and things have changed dramatically in that scene, that tree that you've always loved has fallen and is, is no more. And it's made me certainly want to make the most of things while I can and get out into woodlands as often as I can. It was later that same year in December 2016 that I started this, this YouTube channel. And I just knew instantly that I just had to create a video here. Um, it was an incredibly important location to me. I wanted to base a video around this particular tree, but for various reasons, it's just never happened in these sort of past four years. I remember one particular morning when the forecast was looking particularly good, um, because foggy conditions in this woodland aren't that frequent, uh, but it was looking very, very promising. So I set my alarm, I got up early, but I woke up and I was ill, just this sudden bout of illness. And I was fine later in the morning, but by that point it was too late the fog would have lifted so it was incredibly frustrating and quite unusual as well but i decided to to come down here and uh later that year it was in the middle of the the summer i think and i said to Adele, let's go for a walk i'll show you this this tree that i've found and i can practice some drone footage so we came down like i said it was warm the sun was shining we got to the tree and adele said I don't like it here. I don't like it here one bit. There's just, I just do not get a good feeling or a good vibe. I said, you want to try being here early morning when it's foggy, it's incredibly unnerving. And I said, well, let, let me just practice this drone footage and then we'll make a move. So I got the drone set up and the app said, yes, ready to fly. I took off and the drone just had a mind of its own. It was all over the place. I said, go left, it went right. I said, go down, it went up. And it was dangerous. It was just drifting everywhere. And it, I've never seen it behave like that before. Very, very unusual. And the app, set kept, app kept saying, yes, yeah, we're good. We're ready to fly. So I'd land it, I'd try again, fail again, land it, try again, fail again. Um, so it was getting quite frustrating because I had all this fantastic drone footage in mind, which was going to be tricky to pull off, but would have made a wonderful difference to the video if, if, I could, if I could manage it. So I had to kind of give up, but then I landed the drone and then the app on my phone crashed. Now that had happened before, but this time it had completely locked up the phone. So I kept my finger on the power button on my phone, restarted the phone. Now, what I should see when I restart the phone is the original photograph of that tree as the home screen wallpaper on my phone, but instead it had just disappeared. The screen was just black. I could see all the apps, etc., but the picture had gone. The picture wasn't even stored on the phone anymore. It was just disappeared. <laughs> and I said to Adele, I said, this is really strange. And she's like, yep, yep, that's it, that's it. I've had enough now. Can we leave now? <laughs> I'm sure there's a logical explanation for it but uh, a heck of a, a coincidence, I would say. But as soon as you come out of that woodland and you come back into the more open space, the vibe completely changes and you sort of feel at ease again. Um, but yeah, very, very unusual. And then I tried again in April, 2018. Fabulous misty morning. Everything sort of seemed to be going well, but then I hit more problems and it stops the video again. And it's never going to happen now because unfortunately, since April 2018, a little bit later that year, they came through and felled some of that plantation behind the tree, kind of completely ruined that feeling of darkness and mood behind it. The tree is looking a very sorry for itself now. Um, you know, branches hanging off, a lot of the moss had gone, bits of bark hanging off. So yeah, over the last two years, it's just been, it's been left. So it's sad, I, I think in some ways, I'm almost quite happy that it's just been left to decay quietly in peace over the past two years. So 
So why have I chosen this as my story? Well, it's not merely because it's a symbol of my brand, but it's symbolic of everything that I love about my approach to woodland photography. It's not been a quest to discover the most epic woodlands, but years of exploring every inch of my local area because I've learned that even the smallest and most unlikely locations can hold some undisturbed magic. I don't look at a photograph and see it as something that merely serves a purpose, is aesthetically pleasing or a compositional triumph. It's all the stories and experiences from nature that are wrapped up within it. I don't look at this image and my other favourites and simply view it as a piece of successful photography. It's all those special times that I've enjoyed that have led up to that moment. And how lucky I've been as well to have been able to explore and find these special places. And it's that sense of discovery and the excitement that comes with that that I still seek today. It's the practice of photography that has given me this excuse to be out in nature but it's the art of photography that's given this outlet for me to express my gratitude for what nature has done for me.